if you're going to pay me $55, I take that very directly as a f you. And if it's a f you to me, if you think I'm going to go out and bust my hump and bump all over the place and work my ass off to get your guy over and you're going to pay me 55 bucks, well, I'm probably going to pull back on the accelerator a little bit. <laughs>of many months of false starts and negotiations finally uh, gets a start date for April 13th 1997 Vince McMahon and the WWF also grants Paul and ECW an extraordinary amount of airtime over the course of a couple of months on WWF television including getting some of the ECW guys to turn up and have matches in the Manhattan Center and then have a debate with Jerry Lull in the run-up I presume Shane that you weren't invited to participate in these ECW WWF crossover episodes, or were you actually asked and you declined? It's a great, a great, great question and an interesting story. Uh, I was in the studio. Uh, I forget if it was when my elbow was messed up or if I was. No, I think it was when I was doing the. Uh, uh, for, I would fly up occasionally do the promos. They would might need that they hadn't recorded at the building, and. Vince had called the studio. This is after I was already aware that Vince and Paul had some kind of relationship. And uh, he called and, you know, Paul did one of these, you know, had Vince on speaker. And he said, uh, you know, what about the franchise? And because Paul was telling him who was going to be there. And he said, oh, Shane's not going to come. And he said, well, why? <laughs> As if Vince man had to ask that question. And he kept pressing and Paul kept, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to chime in here. And Paul keeps saying, like, tell me, stay quiet. And uh, Paul finally said to him, is Shawn Michaels going to be there? And he said, of course. And he said, then trust me, you don't want Shane there. <laughs> and that sort of like left it at, at, at that. I, I, you know, it's, you know, I, I hear from the fans, and I'm sure from the fans' perspective, it can look in a million different uh, ways and, 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 and interpretations. When I left there, I said I'd never work for him again. Because I had gone up there on good faith. I had left ECW, a place that I never wanted to leave, uh, that I had helped build and start and create and, and craft into what it had become. I was happy, like the old saying, I was happy as a pig and shit in ECW. Uh, uh, I loved the fans. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the, the product, the style. I loved the dressing room. I loved everything about it. So there was really no reason for me to leave. And I, between my teaching and ECW, I was making far more money than I would later make in WWF in 95. Excuse me. So there was no reason for me to leave. Uh, but when I went up there on good faith, I had walked away from what was essentially my home and for what my career had become known for. Excuse me. So that to me was more than me splaying myself for the WWE. I am opening myself up to you and giving you the opportunity to, to use this character. Uh, in hindsight, I still, I don't think I've ever heard an official version of the story from the company, but when I look back and I see, uh, the paychecks, the pay stubs, which by the way, Meltzer plays into this and I'll explain in a second. Uh, I call home one day and my ex-wife said, where the fuck's all of our money? And she rarely swore and almost never used the F word. So I, I said to her, well, I've been on the road busting my ass. You've been the one getting checks. She told me they weren't very good. She, Long story short, she gets them out and culminates them and tells me that $1,600 for four months pay stubs. I went, no, no, all of them together. And she tells me that is all of them together. I about had a stroke wherever it was I was sitting when I heard that and couldn't wait to get my hands on Vince's throat. And uh, when we finally met, uh, you know, we have this back and forth. All I wanted really from him was to say what I'd heard Dustin tell me. Keep hitting this microphone. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's, a bit of, that, it's a bit of an ungainly sort of uh, uh, yeah, uh, arrangement. Was, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, no, that's no, fine. Uh, Dustin had told me he had given a $10,000 advance on his salary, and that was really all I wanted to hear him say. Just let me pay my bills. If I'm not here working 28 days a month and flying all over God's creation and bumping myself all over the place, then I surely want to be able to pay my $496 a month mortgage payment. And, uh, you know, and I was not one that go out of anybody, talk to anybody that's ever been on the road with me. I don't go out and buy the hundred dollar steak dinner or the $300 hotel room. I, I live very austerely as I can on the road, uh, which is the way I was trained from Dominic and Bruno. So, you know, to, to go and look at this and see this, 
Uh, and, and he kept saying, just hang in there. It's going to get better. Hang in. It's going to get better. And I had to put my notice in. When I finally got out of that contract and left, and we've already been through that story, uh, I swore to myself, I'm never, I will never put myself in his hands again to, to, to allow that to happen. You know, it's an old saying, uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. It was not, not going to be a shame on me. Uh, and, and the fact that I've been able to, in, in 2023, to still be sitting here on a, on a relevant recent show like you, you do, uh, and going out and hearing the fans on a nightly basis like we do today. Uh, tells me that thank God I've been able to carve out that niche in the in the business, and I've created for myself a a, a, a lasting, hopefully, legacy uh, of what the franchise represented in wrestling. And I did that without ever having been on a WrestleMania or having to kiss literally or figuratively Vince's ass. Uh, there, there's something to be said about that. I, I think that the way that a lot of people get treated in this business is, even though we've you know gone forward light years from where I broke into the business. In many ways, the old vestiges that long precede me in wrestling still exist in wrestling. And, and I think that's really pathetic when you look and you see, uh, you know, the, 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 the damage that the guys in our business take. Uh, you never hear, will hear a wrestler that's on the road and, and being figured in. You'll never hear one of the wrestlers say, this sucks. Why do I have to be on the road so much? Why do I have to go to the ring every night and wrestle? This is all, all of our dream. And so like to be sitting there and living like Paul Stanley said, if you want to be a politician, don't bitch when you have to wear a tie. Mm. Part of it is being on the road, uh, a, a big portion of it. And yes, there are sacrifices that you make seeing your first kids, your kids' first words, his first steps, his first day of school, things like that. Uh, there's the infamous story of, uh, of uh, Dr. Death, Steve Williams missing, having to miss his father's funeral because he had to defend the title. Uh, this is what professional wrestlers do. And we sign on to that voluntarily at the beginning. So to somehow at the end say, well, we're paying you shit in that, in those pay stubs in that uh, four months, there was a war in Ohio, which oddly enough is where I started my wrestling, my amateur wrestling career in a club many years before uh, in the semi main event in a damn near sold out Packard music hall, I was paid $55. And I'm pretty sure Razor probably made a little bit more than 55 bucks. Uh, so where Dave Meltzer came into this was he had gone out in his sheet and said something like, I'm lying. Because I remember making the, the comment to Meltzer, whether it was directly, uh, I said, I will show you the pay stubs, provided you print them exactly as they look in your sheet. And he refused. Um uh, I still have them, by the way. Anybody who wants to see them, I'll be more than happy to show them to yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to see them. Yeah. Do you, yeah, keep, do you keep all that thing, all that stuff, all yeah. the pay stubs and everything, all your paperwork paste, from the nineties? Oh, right? everything, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And and early part because I was just like a, a pack rat, you know, as far as like keeping professional papers, uh, but also. Uh, I wanted now, in hindsight, looking back, I wanted to be able to make sure that I always had that proof because I know that fans are always highly suspect of things that we say and things that we do because our business is a work, right? So uh, my contracts I still have, which by the way, I just in the last year had recently shown to, to an attorney for another reason. Uh, but yeah, I have all those old contracts I have. And, and the reason I think is part because it was a monumental point in my, my life, you know, in, in, in pursuing the dream that I had of being a wrestler, I wanted to have these mementos so that down the road, my boys could look at them and see the, 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 to connect the stories. They hear some, someday that my kids might be watching this show somewhere online and wanting to say, Hey, let's go back and pull those files out from dad's file cabinet and see if, if what he's saying is legit there. Um, you know, so yeah, I kept all that stuff and, uh, you know, I think that's more a an indictment of the WWF I, I, because it was still WWF then and Vince McMahon that it is Shane Douglas. Uh, again, I had gone up there and I voluntarily departed from my home in ECW. And, you know, I've heard since other people say, well, you know, when you go to work for Vince, Vince wants you to prove yourself or Vince wants you to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, like or take take it, you know, just so that I can tell you, like, get over the hump or whatever. But with all due respect. By by that point of my career, 95, I would have been 13 years into my career uh, and had more than proven myself as a talent with all the promotions that I had been with. The last thing that Shane Douglas needed was to be tested or, or to prove his mettle. Uh, and then in Todd's book, one of the things, again, I've not read it, but he, Todd told me about this excerpt. 
Uh, Todd is God, by the way, like you said. Uh, Todd with one D is God. I hope he uses a little. Yeah, he's going to love this, you know, as well. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, was, yeah Todd's, Todd, a great guy, and really, you know, what ECW became really was built on the foundation that he he put there for us. But uh, he had said that uh, he was, you know, he maintained close contacts with uh, like JJ Dillon, and he was talking to JJ one time, and he asked JJ, "How's our boy doing?" And he said, "JJ said you can have him back." And I, and for all the fans out there, I'll say full disclosure. Once I saw $55 on my paycheck for Packard Music Hall, my job as a heel, whether I was going over or under, was to get the guy over, in this case, Razor, that I'm working with. And I, again, I think I've proven myself over the years that I'm pretty good at getting other people over. If you're going to pay me $55, I take that very directly as a fuck you. And if it's a fuck you to me, if you think I'm going to go out and bust my hump, and bump all over the place and work my ass off to get your guy over and you're going to pay me 55 bucks. Well, I'm probably going to pull back on the accelerator a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, th that's no embarrassment to me. That's the way I was taught. You know, if I'm getting paid pennies, you're going to get a few bumps. If I'm paying, being paid lavishly, I'll bump myself all over that building. But, uh, you know, so there was, a, you know, you hear the, like Sean Michaels, uh, I've heard in interviews say, well, he wasn't very good. Well, Sean, if I could go out and have pretty good matches with Sabu and pretty good matches with Taz and Terry Funk and and uh, uh, Sandman and the Pitbulls and and and, then why couldn't I have with you? Because if, if you know, it, it takes two to dance, right? And and so like if the case is that, you know, you're trying to say that well, somehow like I just can't carry the water. Uh, again, I'd proven that consistently over a pretty long period of time. And so, like, I, again, I think it's more of an indictment, I think, for what the fans have come to know about the inside of the WWE workings. And this is, by the way, not just me saying these things. You can hear this diatribe from a, from a lot of people that have been there and come and go, uh, is that, uh, you know, because of their click and because of the politics that were involved in, the, in there and everything, and that Vince allowed it to happen. That's why I go back and forth. I vacillate between was this a planned thing by Vince McMahon or was this something that just sort of happened and sort of grew out of control once I was there? Uh, it, I, I mostly fall down on the side of it was a plan by Vince because if you go back and you look and I and at the in the uh, barely legal uh, promo right before the match, I say as much. Uh, or I, I think the line was uh, a challenge to pussies from other promotions and they ain't man enough to come. Uh, you know, so going out and saying those kind of things. And, you know, fully willing to that, if one of them had accepted, say, okay, <laughs> let's get it on then. Let's do this. Uh, you, That was a pretty good way to shut me up. And once you took Shane Douglas out of that dressing room, not that we didn't have other guys that could deliver pretty good promos, that there was not another Shane Douglas franchise in that dressing room. And so, uh, you know, I, it, but from that point of view, it seems pretty clear that this was a way for Vince to get me to shut up and, and that microphone in my hand there. Whichever way it was, I like I said earlier, I was not going to put myself back in Vince's uh, grip to be able to do that to me again. Because it took me a long time to dig out of that hole that I had created in that barely six months that I was in WWF in 95.